My name is Kaylee and today I'm going to talk about the Galt Archaeological Site in Texas, a prehistoric paradise for hunter-gatherers dating thousands of years before the Clovis culture. So recently I created a video on the discovery of ancient occupation in Oregon. Yeah, many people in my comments told me it was not Oregon, but Oregon. So here, you have it. Uh, dating back to 18,250 years ago. But what I didn't know when I created that video is that there's an ancient settlement in Texas dating back to possibly 20,000 years ago. So a few people contacted me about the gold site in Texas, including Dr. Sergio Ayala, and this piqued my interest. So I thought I would create this quick overview video to cover what we currently know about it. Of course, we don't know what the future brings, but there might be new discoveries at the gold site. So I hope you can forgive me if more information is available in the future when you're watching this video that's recorded in September 2023. This is a video on the history of the site and some of the discoveries that were made there. And like I said, it's a quick overview video. So first, let's take a look at the location of the Galt site. It's located in the Buttermilk Creek Valley in Florence, Texas, in of course, you know, the United States of America. So let's start at the beginning more than 100 years ago. So back in 1904, Henry C. Galt bought the 250-acre land that is now known as the Galt Archaeological Site. In 1929, Professor J. E. Pierce of the University of Texas and his colleagues discovered signs of early human settlement on the farmland owned by Henry and his wife Jody. They came across an abundance of beautiful flint artifacts, but they were of the opinion that the site was being destroyed by people digging the specimens for sale. So the Galt family sold the land to Neely Lindsay and eventually became a pay-to-dig site, although unfortunately looting continued, despite the efforts made by the landowners. Then in 1990, David Olmstad, an amateur digger, discovered unusual incised stones with a Clovis point. His find was later on confirmed in 1991 by Dr. Tom Hester and Dr. Michael Collins from the Texas Archaeological Research Lab at the University of Texas. It took another seven years before Dr. Collins was called back to the site by the new owners, a nephew of the Lindsays and his family. So in 1999, Collins started the first official professional dig at the site with a team of professionals and volunteers to reveal the artifacts left behind by prehistoric hunter-gatherers. Most of the discovered artifacts were stone tools, or in other words, lithic technologies that came from the Clovis culture. But they discovered artifacts from other cultures as well, including Folsom, Wilson, Cody, St. Mary's Hall, Golondrina, Barber, Angostura, Hoxie, and Gower. And another unknown one. So 11 different technologies from different cultures that were all found here at this one site. Although the Clovis culture stone tools were the most abundant here at the Galt archeological site. So in May of 2002, under the leadership of Dr. Collins, the team uncovered clues of an unknown culture dating back thousands of years before the Clovis culture dating as far back as possibly 20,000 years, which is thousands of years before many archaeologists thought that humans first started living on the lands in the, you know, so-called New World, the North American lands. So between 1999 and 2002, more than 1.4 million artifacts were discovered at the Galt site. About half of them belong to the Clovis culture. Dr. Michael Collins once said that this was the biggest nest of Clovis artifacts he had ever seen. So the family owning the land decided that the land was too important for them to keep. So in 2007, Dr. Michael Collins used his own money to acquire the site to preserve it. He then formed the nonprofit Gold School and donated the site to the Archaeological Conservancy. 
So between 2007 and 2014, researchers excavated a part of the site known as Area 15. Not Area 51, but Area 15, which specifically targeted an area of occupation predating the Clovis culture. The archaeologists estimate that approximately 3% of the entire site has currently been excavated. In, you know, 2023, they say this. More than 2.6 million artifacts have been discovered so far. Archaeologists have found remains of mammoth, horses and turtles, to name a few, on the site, with butcher marks. So it's possible for the public to tour the Galt site and see where the archaeologists have discovered the artifacts of possibly the first people to inhabit North America. But most likely, and you know, quite definitely, the first people to inhabit Texas. The excavations have been carried out under the leadership of Dr. Michael Collins since 1999, with the help of many archaeologists and numerous volunteers from all over the world over the years. So I was contacted by Dr. Sergio Ayala to take a look at this site and see if I could create a video on it, as it's not well known outside of the archaeological community. So I decided that I wanted to highlight this site on my channel in this quick overview video to hopefully be able to reach people who have never heard of the site that after watching this video now have a hunger to know and learn more about the Galt site. So to think that a few decades ago, the Galt site had a notorious reputation as a dark place where looters and collectors dug up precious artifacts. Many archeologists used to write the site off as a lost cause, but Dr. Michael Collins didn't look at this site in the same fashion as his peers did. His vision, leadership, determination, and passion led to the preservation of the Galt site for research, public education, and future endeavors. Without Dr. Collins, this site would have been lost to history its historical gems hidden to the world, and its importance unknown. He risked his career and personal wealth on a daunting 30-year-long quest to rescue this land. And if not for his determination, the land would have been lost. Many people have no idea how much archaeologists love their job and how they feel about the importance of their work, especially people who are fans of you know, people like Graham Hancock, who almost always paints archaeologists in a bad light, as if they are trying to hide secrets of the past from the public. But this site is evident that Graham Hancock has no idea what he's talking about when he's bashing these researchers, who, you know, devoted their entire lives to their career. If only the people supporting Graham Hancock with all their money supported people like Dr. Michael Collins. The people in the field of archaeology would be able to acquire lots of sites like Galt to preserve them and make them available for research and educational purposes. We would be able to uncover much more of our ancient past if this was the case. Unfortunately, people are drawn to the fantastic, the incredible tales of what could have possibly been instead of what actually was our ancient history. Yeah, an ancient, advanced, lost civilization sounds much more alluring than hunter-gatherers living in Texas some 20,000 years ago. But hey, those hunter-gatherers actually existed, while there has been no actual evidence for a lost, advanced, ancient civilization. The researchers working at the Galt site, including Dr. Michael Collins, are currently in the works of producing a film about the archaeological site. And this film is scheduled to be released next year in 2024. So when this film comes out, I will of course watch it, as you can imagine, and create a review on it for my viewers to see. And hopefully it will pique all of your interests to go watch the film for yourselves. I think it's time to support real archaeology, to support the researchers working in the field who are able to uncover secrets of the ancient world that will change our perception of our ancient past. Of course, as you can imagine, I have left out a lot 
of information on the artifacts and the research that was done here at the Galt site, mostly because this is a quick overview video to pique your interest. I hope that all of you watching this video will watch the film, or do your own research, or maybe even buy the book Secrets in the Dirt Uncovering the Ancient People of Galt by Mary S. Black. It's available on Amazon. But for now, this is my very quick overview video on the Galt site in Texas. A treasure trove for archaeologists and ancient history lovers. And I will create a more detailed video on this site next year when the film about the Galt site is released. So what do you think about this ancient site and the work done here and its history? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. I sometimes upload without a warning, not in my schedule, like this video. And if you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click one of the links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. And I would like to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. I recently got the official diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis, which is not something fun. And I got some medication and I got very sick from the medication. And yeah, I lost my voice for about a week, felt horrid. Last time I was sick was 2017. I rarely ever get sick. Ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune disorder, which means that my immune system is on overdrive, normally. And uh, when it's on overdrive, I just don't get sick. And now my immune system dropped drastically and I got very ill. Uh, high fevers, uh, flu symptoms, it wasn't fun. But I'm starting to feel like myself again. My voice has finally returned, so I can finally record a video for you guys. But yeah, um, there's no cure for this condition. There's nothing that can be done just except, you know, uh, help with the symptoms, I guess. Um, I have to move a lot, like keep moving, don't sit too still, don't do nothing. So I go to the gym about five to seven days a week to make sure that my body moves a lot and I'm gaining some muscle. Uh, it's not much, but hey, I'm, at least I'm lifting weights. So yeah, um, with that said, this was my video and I'll see you in the next one. And yeah, I'll probably be fine for a couple decades at least. Bye guys.